Hey listeners, it's Paul Andriola here. Why not join our community at Small Cap Discoveries where we offer our members direct access to some of the best microcap investment opportunities available. Our members are getting access to premium microcap financings, research reports, and direct access to management. Sign up today at www.smallcapdiscoveries.com. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Small Cap Discoveries conference call. Today on our call, we have CEO Jeff Kendrick from Smatrix Corp. Smatrix trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol CVX and on the OTC under CTXXF, or sorry, CTXXF. The company is currently trading at 24 and a half cents with roughly 134 million shares outstanding or about a $33 million market cap. I'd now like to hand it over to Paul Andriola. Thanks a lot, Trevor. Um, uh, Jeff, great to have you back. It's been just over a year since we had you on the last time. Um, and you know, a year's a long time in this, in this uh, day and age, so uh, lots to sort of update and cover everybody on. Um, but before we get into any sort of updates, Jeff, why don't you remind everybody uh, what Symmetrix is all about? No, thanks, Paul. And uh, uh, so Symmetrix is in the business of cellular concrete and other uh, infrastructure materials now as well. Uh, we'll talk a bit about that later. But so uh, cellular concrete is essentially uh, a, a ready mix type product where you take out all the sand and gravel and you replace it with a carefully constituted air bubble system that creates a lightweight cement based material. And um, by doing that, you create a lightweight material that's insulating, has some structural properties, and it's used to replace a lot of other products that have been used in infrastructure applications only because there wasn't something better available to use. So it has many benefits over the products that it replaced, not only from a, um, a structural and, uh, and characteristic perspective, but also a cost perspective as well. So generally, the products that we've replaced in, on an installed basis are lower in cost than the products that we've replaced. We don't replace concrete or cement. That's important to know. Where we replace products like um, EPS block, which is large styrofoam blocks or, or um, four by eight sheets of, rigid, sheets of rigid insulation where they're used to insulate under buildings or under roads and highways and things like that. We replace expensive steel and concrete pile construction. We replace um, other lightweight aggregates in backfill options. We replace a weak and unstable soils in road and highway uh, situations where you're you're trying to build a highway over say peat moss or silts or gravel or other things where if you put a regular a heavy gravel type material it would just sink and the road would continue to fail over time so there's there's hundreds of applications those are the big ones um some of the 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 bigger applications or the types of applications we do are like the backfill of of overpasses or highway bridge abutments. We build, um, we underlay roads that cross weak and unstable soils or in seismic prone areas. Uh, we, we um, uh, uh, it's used in tunnel grouting. So whenever they're building new infrastructure under older cities, they're doing it by way of tunnel, digging the tunnel, then putting water lines or sewer lines and then grouting around each of those pipes. So those are big applications for us. Um, and then we do insulation and all kinds of other things. There's just thousands and thousands of applications, but generally it's in the infrastructure market. And the other thing that's important about cellular concrete versus the legacy products that we replace is generally we're more environmentally friendly. Not just from a C, not all the time from a CO2 basis, okay? Because we use cement, of course, in our material. And of course, there is quite a bit of CO2 that's taken in making making um, cement and of course that that contributes to the CO2 in our product as well but for many applications even the full applications were lower in CO2 because we reduce CO2 emissions in other ways by speeding up construction by making the um, infrastructure last longer all kinds of different things lower construction traffic on site and things like that but the other thing is is that we're replacing things like styrofoam and rigid insulations and EPS block that are single use plastics that don't break down in landfills. So if you had a choice between a cellular concrete, which is 80% air that you could basically break up into a powder and reuse, 
or use a rigid insulation that never breaks down in a landfill, you would choose cellular concrete from an environmental perspective. So there's all kinds of things that you need to consider from an environmental perspective. So generally, in all circumstances, we're more environmentally friendly as well. And, um, and so that's from a product basis. From a business basis, we started our business in Alberta 20 years ago in the oil and gas construction area. I was growing dramatically. Uh, the market ended when the financial collapse ended in 2008 and 9, so we had to rebuild the business on the infrastructure basis. Finally got that going and acquired two of the leading suppliers in the U.S., that being mixed on site out of Chicago and Pacific International Guard out of the UF, out of Bellingham, Washington. And then, of course, COVID. So the past two years, we've been dealing with COVID, which hasn't hurt us entirely, meaning we haven't lost any sales. But what it's meant is that a lot of the projects that we had lined up to be done have been delayed. Now, the good news is, is that coming into 2022, is our customers, meaning our general contractors, say that, that those delays are coming to an end. So they don't foresee any COVID-related issues moving forward, um, which is very good news for not only Symmetrix, but its shareholders as well. Because over the past two years, we, particularly the larger projects have been delayed. You know, we've had a large project in North Carolina that was supposed to start last spring that will now start this year. Uh, another big tunnel project that was supposed to start in July and be done in December didn't start till December. It's now done. But again, those are the things that have affected our business over the past year. Again, we never lost any sales. They just were delayed. So even though sales have been off for the last two years, the market has actually been growing exponentially in the background. So in Canada alone, the bids that we do on an annual basis have grown by 40% over pre-COVID levels. So these are the projects that engineers would approach us on for a design, a quote, or both. And, and that has grown, in, in particularly in 2021, 20% 20 over pre-COVID levels. So that just shows strong organic growth. They just haven't gone into the ground yet, but they will start going into the ground in 2022 and beyond. The other good thing that's happening, of course, in the marketplace is that uh, most of the governments in North America, and particularly the U.S. government, is about to move forward, you know, a trillion dollars in replacement infrastructure. And that's really the start of the replacement of six trillion of needed infrastructure replacement. So it's just the beginning. That hasn't hit our marketplace yet. Um, that's not in our budgets or forecast. So we expect it, it will benefit Symmetrix and companies like us in the future. It's just it hasn't happened yet. Um, and so our forecasts right now are just based on continued strong organic growth, both in Canada and the U.S. And we haven't um, contemplated um, what may happen from an acquisition perspective, too, as well. So it's important to note that from a strategic plan basis, our plan is uh, we raised $23 million a year ago, um, put a bunch of cash in the bank. We use that to strengthen our balance sheet, so we paid off all of our high interest debt. So we'll, we still have $20 million in the bank from that amount. So with the $23 million, we also had another four-plus million exercised in warrants and options. And so we utilized, again, that cash to put ourselves in a very strong position moving forward. And we started looking for strong acquisition opportunities for the company. Um, one of those opportunities we've just invested in, and that was announced in February, uh, a company called Glavel. Glavel is um, producing a product that's even more environmentally friendly than cellular concrete, because basically it's made from recycled glass and clean energy. So um, the company that we've got involved with out of Vermont um, in the U.S. Uh, has uh, now uh, put in their first line. It actually st just started operating a month ago. And uh, our investment will not only support the, that growth, but also adding a second line to that plant for, during the year. So by next year, they will be have two full lines and be able to produce 150,000 cubic yards of um, expanded or foamed glass. So just like our material, which is a foam cellular concrete, this is a foam glass, but it's made in a plant situation where ours is made on site. 
And so um, foam glass has many applications, some of which are complementary to what Symmetrix is doing already. So they apply to our infrastructure market. They, are, it, they actually produce a material that's lighter than our material. And where that becomes important is when we're trying to replace EPS block in situations where cellular concrete is too heavy. So this foam glass can actually be a replacement for that EPS block. And of course, it's a much more environmentally friendly product than the EPS block that it will be replacing. So, so it has complementary applications to what we're doing. Usually it doesn't compete against us but we can also do joint projects together. And because we sell into the infrastructure market, we can help them market their product across the Northeast US as well. It also has a tremendous amount of growth potential, okay? And even though we say in our uh, news release that we're, you know, with the current investment plan, we will only own 40% of the company, Essentially, it is an acquisition over time because um, we have a first right of refusal on all future uh, fundraisings. And the, the plan is, of course, to grow a uh, global business across um, the U.S. Uh, and, and so that will require additional plants in the future, um, not necessarily the current year, but certainly in 2023 and beyond. And so that's kind of a quick summary. Again, the business itself has been growing in the background. The sales haven't proven it out, but for guidance this year, we will do more than 30 million in sales. If things all come to fruition, which it looks like they may, we could get closer to 40 million, and that's excluding any sales from acquisition. So we are also have identified opportunities that we're working on right now that may um, become a, a full acquisition in the next few months or before the end of the year. So there could be additional sales related to that. And because of the continued growth, we still expect to be 100 million in sales within um, five years. And we also expect to be in, in excess of 20% EBITDA on those sales. Perfect. So Paul, I think that's a good summary to start with. And uh, yeah. And maybe we can go from yeah, there. Yeah, no, that's, that's that's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do have a number of questions, but before I jump in with questions, I want to remind everybody that's listening, if you guys have got questions uh, you'd like me to ask Jeff, just use the chat function, uh, type in your question. I'll do my best to, to ask that question. Um, Jeff, so with, with both um, uh, sort of your original business and Glavel, uh, give us a better sense of what your business model is. Is this, I mean, do you guys have staff that go out, you know, uh, go out and install the cellular concrete, or is this something that you train others to install and you basically supply the recipe? How, how, do, you, how do you describe it? No, very good question. We, we have um, 10 dry mix plants and eight, eight wet mix plants on the cellular concrete side that go out and manufacture the product on site. So you will see our equipment set up in a bridge abutment in North Carolina or in Alberta or in Toronto and Ontario, you know, and they'll be pouring a bridge abutment or pouring a road. So we manufacture the material with our equipment on site. Okay, we're completely mobile. So we can not only do projects across North America, but eventually when we expand internationally, we can go anywhere in the world with our equipment. That is the cellular concrete site. The Glavel site is actually an aggregate. So if you think about, uh, they pour their glass into a, a mixture that mixes with a, um, an agent that when you heat it up, it foams up and then it, it, go, it is processed through a kiln. And when it comes out to the other end, it, break, it cools down and breaks into an aggregate, which are like three inch boulders. So it is actually not placed by the company. It's placed, so a, comp, a general contractor will buy it like a, buying a, a truckload of gravel and they'll place it into their application where it's insulating under a, a residential house, for example. So you're insulating the basement or it's uh, used in a roof deck application. So you're, you know, it, it may go to site by either by truck or by bag, right? Mm -hmm. Bag on a truck. So, uh, but it's placed by the general contractor and it's manufactured in a plant facility. So mm -hmm. significantly different, similar types of applications, but there are other applications to note is that they also sell into the building material market, which includes roof decks, wall systems, 
flooring systems and things like that mm. too as well. Interesting. And, and the fact that it's, it's basically taking, you know, sort of previously used glass and recycling it. Is there any sort of, um, uh, what's the word, uh, credits, you know, what is it, CO credits or anything like that? The that, carbon credits? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there will be. We're just in the process of developing, you know, the whole process now. Um, mm. So one of the reasons that we got involved with Glavel, because there's another company in, in the U.S. that's involved in the foam glass business. They actually started ahead of, of Glavel, and they're called Arrow. Uh, they're out of uh, North Carolina, or Pennsylvania, I believe. And um, so they've had a plan operating for a few years now, and they've been developing that geotechnical market in the Northeast U.S. and have been very successful. But they've been successful, and God will be successful, because this is a proven product. It was introduced in Europe 25 years ago. And in Europe 25 years ago, the Europe was recycling less than 30% of its glass. Now it's recycling 90% of its glass. So uh, very environmentally friendly. Uh, it fits right along what we all are working towards. And again, a, a safer planet for us all. And of course, you know, when you look at what Biden is approving from an infrastructure perspective, there has to be a green element to these infrastructure projects. So we will meet those obligations and be able to fit into those projects. So we'll be able to help those U.S. and Canadian general contractors actually meet the, the green obligations under these contracts. So, mm -hmm. um, so I, yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, not only have they, do they produce a product that's green from recycled glass, they decided to go with an electric kiln versus a gas kiln to, again, be more green and use 100% green energy. So it's all being provided by solar and nuclear, uh, which is considered clean energy in, in the U.S. as well. So as we grow that business with them, we will continue to do that across North America. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, the, um, the, the typical customers on that end, though, are they sort of your typical infrastructure sort of providers or is it a different customer than, than your cellular concrete customer? On the infrastructure side, it will be similar to ours. So mm -hmm. some of our, our um, customers will be able to use their product and we will be able to refer their product to them, right? So to these mm -hmm. customers. But they also will have landscapers, um, uh, house builders, commercial builders that are using it to insulate floors and insulate their roofs and, and uh, things like that. So it's a different a different area. We honestly, with cellular concrete, will um, do some residential housing too as well, but it's not something that we pursue. We usually pursue the big geotechnical applications. And because engineers love our product, if they're building a house, they generally want to put it in their house as well, right? right? So they'll order it to insulate their basement from us. Interesting. Um, you know, apart from COVID, you sort of mentioned there was a bunch of delays due to COVID. Um, what, what other challenges are you facing? I mean, part of the question I had earlier about, you know, whether you guys install any of the product yourself um, means that you've got labor, right? And we're all hearing about issues around labor shortages and, you know, finding skilled people to, to work. Um, are you guys facing that? And if not, what other challenges are you facing? Uh, yeah, we will. Um, mm -hmm. There's no doubt. Um, we're facing it already. You know, fortunately, Paul, what we've done is um, we're, we retained our staff during COVID, where a lot of people laid them off, but all of ours were skilled, trained people. So um, it cost us more in losses for the past two years, but it put us in a great position moving forward. And, and so all of our staff, meaning from an operations perspective, is underutilized. So with our growth in sales, we won't need to add a lot. And what we've done to protect ourselves as well is to cross-train everybody. So you can break one six-man crew into three crews, hire a couple of laborers for each, and, and have three operations going, right? So, um, so we've, 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 we know what the future is. We know it was coming. So rather than sacrifice our future and our shareholders' future, we prepared for it. And, uh, and then the other side, from an equipment perspective, as we talked about last year, is that with the two U.S. acquisitions, we actually have two and a half million cubic yards of seasonally adjusted production capacity, which can produce 175 million U.S. in sales. 
So last year, our sales was under 30 million. So without adding another piece of equipment, we've got tremendous capacity within our equipment as well. The issue that we may face, and it's um, is on the um, su cement supply side, okay? Um, because um, of COVID and um, some shutdowns in cement plants, last year there was somewhat of a shortage out there. And on top of that, coming out of COVID, there's gonna be such a high demand for cement. Even with our strong relationship with Lafarge, Lafarge can run out of cement too, okay? There's just, the, the demand just becomes so great out there. If you can remember back about 10 years in the, in the US, they had a, a strong issue with, um, with lack of cement and they're bringing it in internationally. Well, a lot of those things have been delayed because of COVID. And of course, the extra cost of shipping coming over from, whether cement is coming over from Greece or Turkey or other places like that, Korea or other, China or other places. So there's an increased cost to that. Now we're somewhat protected within our contracts that we already have in place, but it, it is an issue that we may face. Um, but in previous years with our relationship with Lafarge, we've been able to get through it without any pain. It right? doesn't mean it won't happen, but we've been protected somewhat. So that's the benefit of having strong relationships with these uh, cement companies, not only Lafarge, but others as well. Mm -hmm. And you Where, mentioned, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, there has been a supply chain benefit to the company, actually, that mm -hmm. started last fall. And that is that there's been a, one of the products we replace, as mentioned, is EPS block, which mm -hmm. is large styrofoam block that is made from petroleum products. Yeah. Well, there's a shortage of EPS block and a nine month delay. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't like to have nine month delays in their uh, construction of their bridges. So <laughs> we're getting a lot of calls to replace EPS block on, on these bridges now. And of course, not only has there been delay, but because the increase in the price of oil products, the price of mm -hmm. that product has gone up significantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we're, we're hearing the same thing. There's another company that we know that, that uh, as sort of an insulating product around that. And same thing, they've been telling us there's big delays in that type of product. Yeah. Um, the, the Glavel, uh, sort of the facility or the operations that you're, you're picking up right now, what, what's, their, what's their, their capacity dollar wise? And then I, I heard you say, you guys are looking to build another line. Give us a sense of where, you know, what, what, what sort of run rate expectations yeah, so of- a Typically a plant will have two lines, okay? okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The one that they built right now is one. Okay, so what our investment is doing is putting in the second line, okay? Mm -hmm. So two lines can produce at 100, they can produce 150,000 cubic yards of product, okay? And generally it can be sold out, okay? At an average price of 90 to $100 a cubic yard, okay? Generally, it can produce 20 to 30% EBITDA on those sales, right? Gotcha. So... Smatrix will help them sell out their plant, right? If they don't sell it out themselves, because we are running across projects all the time right now that we're referring to them. Mm -hmm. And Arrow, Global's competitor, is experiencing the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. so they see exponential growth in that area too as well. And it's good to have competitors. Mm -hmm. um, um, so they're helping develop the market as we will and we get rolling along too. So we will benefit each other. And, um, and neither one of us can take the whole market. It's huge, right? It's, right. it's, and so, so, but we will, you know, again, in the next, you know, five years, look to maybe building another five or more plants, right? Mm -hmm. In different places in North America. Yeah, because that was going to be my next question is geographically, there must be a sort of a, a limitation in terms of how far you transport this thing before it sort of loses its economics. Is that correct? Well, you know, Glavel, or before we bought them, is actually shipped product to um, to uh, Seattle um, wow. profitably, wow. and it came from actually Europe. So what Glavel did well was seed the market before they built their plant. Right. So they actually brought um, foam glass over from their partner in Europe, mm -hmm. and and started selling it in 2020. Now 2021 kind of fell off because of the cost of containers became came you know prohibitive to bring product over but um and arrows experienced the same thing they're shipping product into california from their plant in north carolina or pennsylvania and, and doing it profitably 
Yeah, um, maybe give us a, a little more details of the structure of the deal you have with Laval, because you mentioned that you're um, sort of contractually, um, not obligated, but contractually, you're up to 40% ownership at some point through different payments. But maybe give us a sense of what the cost is and, and how the sort of the breakdown of the terms. Yeah, without you know, disclosing too much that's non-public right now, mm -hmm. um, um, essentially a 40% ownership is costing us approximately four point, a uh, little less than 4 million US, I believe. Okay, gotcha. And uh, I think you mentioned earlier, you about $20 million in cash uh, in the business right now. Um, I mean, do you, do you foresee a need to go back to the market anytime in the near future? Um, the answer will be um, probably mm -hmm. um, because we certainly don't want to raise capital right now at our share price, but we believe that 2022 is going to be a very good year. So the share price should rebound quite significantly. Again, there's no guarantee that to that, but we know that we're going to be profitable. We're going to be generating strong EBITDA. We're going to finish some acquisitions and that our shareholder base will be quite pleased by the end of the year based on what we know now, right? Barring any unforeseen circumstances, it, it looks very promising for the upcoming year. And that's being very conservative as well. So, um, and during that year, uh, you know, one of the plans is to prove out Glavel too as well. So if we sell out the plant as we plan, and they can sell out their first line at seven and a half million in sales and, uh, and make money, then that proves out their future too as well. Mm -hmm. So, and that helps understand the value of that opportunity. And, uh, and so, you know, sometime in 2023, if not earlier, we may be looking to go back to the markets to build more, more foam glass plants, right, in different locations across Canada. Or we've come across another acquisition that re may require additional capital that will, that acquisition of which will be beneficial to our shareholders and accretive. So we, we may look at going back to market for that as well, but not likely in the current year mm -hmm. and not until the price rebounds from a share perspective. And then I guess uh, around the acquisitions, what what do you sort of have your eye out for? Is, is it more cellular concrete uh, operations or a new type of product like Glavel has? What, what, what are you well, looking for? So I'll explain it from the perspective is two things. We Before considering the acquisition side of it is we were looking at um, regional expansion, particularly in the U.S. and in Quebec and Canada, but mostly in the U.S. because that's where we so see a lot of the growth coming for the future. If you think about where Mix on Site is, they're in Chicago and they're servicing the, the Texas market right now, but it's expensive to drive down there to do projects, right? So that's where we see, saw the growth coming. So, um, and of course, our other acquisition is in Bellingham, Washington, which is in the Northwest U.S. So it's a long way to drive to do projects in the Southern U.S. And it, 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 it makes us less competitive, not only against other Southern concrete suppliers, but other competitive products. So regional expansion was key. And we plan to build some equipment for that regional expansion as well. So even though we have a lot of capacity, it's not in that, in the medium, small to medium sized project area, we don't have the capacity. So we need to add some equipment for that. And we're in the process of finalizing what equipment we're going to do. And we're going to be moving forward with that quite quickly here in the, in the near future. So, um, um, so, uh, so that from regional expansion perspective, then we also look at acquisition opportunities in those regions that may supplement our, our regional expansion, okay? So uh, they may be in the cellular concrete business or a same or similar business, right? So we're not, we're not looking at outside of our typical market, but you may have a grouting company, for example, in, in uh, Texas that may be doing compact, compact grouting or um, um, other types of grouting, especially grouting that we don't do. And they may do a little cellular concrete or not, but we could use their products in our other business. So they become not only complementary from a product perspective, but they also um, 
uh, enable us to, to expand into an area without starting from scratch, right? They're already developing a business down there. They've already been successful. Um, and the other thing we've been looking at, which is why we ended up with the, the global acquisition, is products that are in the infrastructure market that may not be same or similar to cellular concrete, but they're, they're complementary to what we're doing and they're environmentally or green related because that's where our focus is on environmentally friendly construction solutions. Not only now for the infrastructure market, for the building component market as well. Now, um, do, you, do you guys publish a sales backlog? We do. Okay. And, and what, what sort of numbers do you have as far as a black, uh, current backlog? Yeah, our, back, our backlog at the end of December, which is last time we reported it, which was, at, uh, you know, we'll come out again when we report our mm -hmm. uh, year-end results uh, at the, uh, in the second week of Wednesday on the second week of April. Um, so it'll be coming out after the close of business on that day. We were at 86.1 million. We're approximately the same now. Mm -hmm. um, so even though we continue to put sales in ground, that, that we continue to replace that backlog. Now, generally the backlog under non-COVID conditions would normally be lower than that. It would be comparable to the annual sales because generally there's not long periods between when we land a contract and it goes into the ground, right? So we do expect that over time, the, the backlog will be maybe one and a half times sales level as opposed to three to four times sales level, right? So. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, another question is around intellectual property. Um, is there any IP around the stuff you guys uh, do? There's a lot of trade secrets mm -hmm. that we protect by trade secrets. Like most of our IP is formula related. And if you patent formulas, people just copy them. So we protect them through other means. Um, and, you know, we have processes in our equipment that people can't see, right? So um, rather than patent them and see people finding out how we actually make them and use them, we don't, we don't, we don't um, patent them. So uh, same with Glavel. Um, they have, the foam glass has been around for a while. So there are knowledge and technology that they've acquired that is confidential and stuff that they've added, but it, it's trade secrets that they will protect. Um, but there is, there's no real patents related to our technology right now, right. but lots right. of proprietary technology. Sure. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so, I mean, you, you touched on one question we always ask is sort of around a five-year plan or five-year, what, you know, what sort of does business look like five years out? You, you mentioned a hundred million in sales, but I mean, explain that a little bit more in terms of like ge geographically, what do you expect to have product wise? What do you expect to have? Just what does this business look like five years from today? Ge geographically, we will be well trenched right throughout North America. So that doesn't mean a lot, right? Because mm -hmm. from, for example, a place in Texas, we can handle the entire Gulf States, for example, we don't have to be have a, a location in each area. Um, if we're in California, we don't need to be in Southern California and Central California, Northern California. So you can, uh, even from a gravel plant, you can service really 200 miles out. You asked earlier what generally where you would look at. It's, it's basically about 200 miles from, a, from a, um, uh, the gravel, which is more of a trucking a, a material. For us, it's anywhere. Like uh, we could stay in Calgary not even have a facility in anywhere in the U.S. and still do jobs in Florida. So we don't, we're completely mobile, right. okay? So so keep that in mind. But what will happen is the business model you asked about is, again, right now we're cellular concrete and we'll be more in foam glass, okay? And so we'll probably do some other cellular concrete acquisitions besides, um, and these will be companies that will be complementary to what we're doing and in locations that will assist with regional expansion as well. And so we'll be located generally in the four quadrants of the U.S. Uh, from a base operation perspective and in uh, two to three locations in Canada. Uh, Canada. Canada's a lot more vast, so you kind of have to spread yourself out a little bit um, yeah. to really cover the entire territory. Yeah. And then foam glass, um, you know, we can build plants in various areas uh, across the U.S. And, of course, there's a large glass supply out there. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, uh, 
uh, finding a uh, raw material to support your product is not hard to do. No, um, yeah. Although you still yeah. have to secure it, you still have to clean yeah. it, you still have to do all the things that are necessary to provide a quality product. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, so for both companies, we will be across North America. And by that time, we actually expect to be doing some international work too as well. Mm -hmm. Whether we're doing it on a large contract basis by working with, for example, Lafarge internationally, and getting involved in big P3 uh, construction projects, or we're potentially may end up li licensing and franchising mm -hmm. some of the technology out to various countries. Right? So, yeah, yeah, no, I, I see that as an opportunity as well. Um, as we get near the end here, um, and you're sort of talking to investors like us, what, what do you think are the key catalysts or key sort of things, metrics that we should be watching to make sure you guys are uh, executing in your business? I think, you know, you're going to see a lot of, keep an eye out for the news releases, right? So it, it, remember that we're a seasonal business for the most part, because most of our work is done in the northern U.S. and in Canada. So uh, first quarter results are not going to tell you what's happening with the company, but keep an eye out for what's being landed from a project perspective and what's being contracted. And also keep an eye out for, you know, as we finalize some of these acquisitions and move forward with regional expansion. So spending money on, you know, equipment and things like that. And, and by the end of the year, you know, our job is, is uh, to put the product in the ground and make money. So um, you will see that happening because you'll be able to see these projects being landed and contracted and knowing that they're going into the ground mm -hmm. and that they will generate profits. And because of that, you know, likely the stock market will catch up with um, where we're going, right? So. Mm -hmm. And then Jeff, um, sort of, is, is there a key message or a key takeaway you want everybody to walk away with today about the business? Well, key message is again, that, you know, like I know our stock price is trading at 24 cents down from a high of like 86 cents uh, earlier in the year last year. But the, the business hasn't gone down in value. It's actually grown in value. And um, it's just, you know, we've been affected in the short term by COVID. But in the background, the actual market itself continues to grow exponentially. We continue to strengthen our business. We've retained all of our key staff and we've grown our staff. And, uh, and, um, and because of that, we've spent more money and lost a bit more money during those uh, COVID issue times. But that, there, was a, there was a plan around that. And because of that, we're ready to go for 2022 and beyond, where other companies are struggling to find people and equipment and finding, you know, you know to be able to order equipment. It's hard to order mm -hmm. even trucks out there these days. Well, we're ready to go, right? So mm -hmm. I think we've planned well. Uh, to the cost somewhat uh, in the short term, mm -hmm. but in the long term, um, our shareholders are going to benefit from the way that we've approached this COVID situation and the future. Well, I mean, 80, 80 plus million dollars in backlog. Um, sounds like you guys are certainly doing some of the right things. Um, and an exciting new uh, project with Glavel. Um, so we, we always like to hear when there's new things happening. Uh, to sort of kickstart interest or to, to have optionality on new business. So it sounds like you guys are covering that off. Um, so congratulations. Uh, it looks like you guys have, have uh, sort of met the COVID challenge and getting ready to, uh, to embark, uh, you know, post-COVID. Um, listen, Jeff, if any investors want more information, what's the best way they can uh, contact the company and get more information? Well, I'm always available and my, my, my email address is on the website. And uh, But it's also... You know, we work with the Howard Group out of Calgary and, and Bristol um, out of uh, Toronto. Each of those, uh, the gentlemen that are um, providing our support, like Jeff Walker from the Howard Group and, uh, and Glenn at Bristol, they know that our company inside and out too, mm -hmm. so they can answer your questions. In particular, the Howard Group has been with us for over 10 years and and uh, you know that, that we wouldn't be around without them. They've been a great support and uh, appreciate all they've done for us. And of course, appreciate the opportunity to continue to meet with you, Paul, and your team and uh, and look forward to our discussions in the future. Absolutely. So do we. Uh, well, that's great. Well, listen, we've been speaking with Jeff Kendrick, uh, CEO of Symmetrix, uh, CVX uh, on the Venture Exchange. Um, Jeff, it's always great to catch up. Continued success. We're looking forward to uh, catching up with you as well. And, uh, you know, keep smiling. Thank you. Keep your eye open, guys. Things are going well. Awesome. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.